Introduction to Electrical Safety Management Electricity is an integral part of any manufacturing facility and sometimes it is easy to forget just how dangerous it can be. While electricity is helpful, it is a serious workplace hazard. Electricity can expose employees to electric shock, burns and even electrocution. Faulty electrical equipment can cause fires and explosions, which can cause serious damage to your facility and property. When electrical safety management is lacking in your factory, you risk workers' injuries and fatalities. When workers need to take time off to recover from an injury, you lose production time. You would also need to pay for medical expenses and other compensation. These incidents will damage your reputation in the community and with your clients. However, these tragedies can easily be avoided by following safety procedures and making sure all equipment and accessories are in working order so that a safe working environment can be maintained for everyone. Assess The key to understanding electrical risks is to assess hazards within your facility. Electrical accidents are commonly caused by three factors unsafe equipment and or installation, workplaces made unsafe by the operating environment which can, for example, be dusty or wet, and unsafe work practices. An Environmental Health and Safety EHS, committee should be formed to assess workplace electrical hazards. Members should include management, workers, an electrical supervisor and a certified safety officer, as required by country law. Most electrical hazards can easily be spotted simply by paying attention to inadequate wiring, loose electrical connections, exposed electrical parts, poor insulation of wires and cords, ungrounded electrical systems and tools, overloaded circuits, use of homemade extension cords, damaged power equipment, lack of personal protective equipment, PPE, such as insulated shoes and gloves, overhead power lines, wet work areas, and workers using electrical cords to move or pull equipment, and not verifying if the power is off before making repairs. These are all common within manufacturing facilities. You must also be aware of warning signs that signal electrical hazards. For example, tripped circuit breakers or blown fuses are good indicators of electrical overload. Warm tools, wires, cords, connections and worn insulation around wires and connections are all warning signs that equipment and wiring should be inspected. Electrical short-circuiting or overloading can lead to a fire or explosion, especially with equipment that contains a heat source. This can be a source of ignition in potentially flammable or explosive areas, for example, around flammable chemicals. This seems like a long list of hazards, but often appropriate control measures can be implemented immediately to lower risks. Manage. When you plan your work, also plan for safety. There are many ways to protect your factory and workers from electrical accidents, such as insulation, guarding live parts, proper grounding, use of electrical protective devices, such as ground fault circuit interrupter, GFCI. 
fuses, circuit breakers, and PPE, and safe working practices. All electrical tools, especially handheld ones, and cords and wires must be properly insulated. Production floors are filled with equipment with flexible cords, and these cords can easily be damaged by activities in the area, such as folding, aging, etc. Improper use of these cords can cause shocks, burns, or fire. Power cords should also be well protected and taped down and there should not be any loose cords running through walls, doors, or across the floor. Nails and staples can damage the cords easily, possibly causing fire and other shock hazards. Do not attempt to repair cords. For safety reasons, just buy new ones. Often there are more machines in the factory than there are power outlets, and hence power bars are used. Power bars should always have a fuse or breaker. If too many devices are plugged into a circuit, the current will heat the wires and may cause a fire. When circuit breakers or fuses are used to shut off the flow of electricity in the event of an overload, make sure they are the proper ones. Correctly rated fuse. If improper fuses are used, it can give a false sense of security as one might expect the fuse to shut off the current. However, a circuit with improper current protection devices is a hazard in and of itself. Fuses and circuit breakers are designed to protect equipment and facilities. They can also protect against shock in most situations. Label all circuit breakers and fuse boxes clearly and use proper wiring and connectors. Circuit breakers and panels should be enclosed to prevent dusty and wet conditions, and the panel itself must be made of flame retardant materials. Whether you are using an electric, gas or diesel generator, it needs to be regularly maintained by trained personnel. Generators use oil, gasoline, lubricants and fuel, and you can imagine when used alongside electrical wires, cords and plugs, it is a dangerous combination that can cause serious electrical incidents and even fires. Therefore, all parts of the generator must be checked and maintained properly by a licensed engineer. Facilities should always guard live parts of electrical equipment, according to country laws, to avoid accidental contact. Use approved cabinets or enclosures and ensure these are clearly marked with warning signs. Standardized barriers and signage should be placed throughout work areas to control access and ensure that only trained and qualified personnel can enter hazardous areas. The installation, wiring and repair of electrical appliances must be carried out by a qualified and certified electrician. Ensure workers are not working in wet areas and whenever possible use GFCI to protect workers from electrical shock if there are unavoidable wet areas with electrical equipment. Avoid overhead power lines when possible. Elevated machines, vehicles and equipment such as backhoes, forklifts, portable ladders and scaffolding can easily come into contact with unguarded overhead power lines causing electrical accidents. De-energizing electrical equipment by turning the power and electricity off before they are inspected and repaired. Using electric tools that are in good condition. Being cautious when working near electrical sources and using appropriate protective equipment are all the responsibilities of workers. However, management is responsible for educating workers periodically and monitoring workers to ensure they adopt safe working practices around electrical hazards. The factory's EHS committee should also check that all equipment is not damaged or improperly modified and that all users are using the equipment according to the manufacturer's specifications. 
tools and equipment must be properly grounded or double insulated. It is the committee's responsibility to conduct a biannual electrical risk assessment and electrical safety inspection, which should include replacing insulation on any damaged wires, setting up anti-explosion electrical wires and lights at flammable material storage areas, testing all short circuit brakes monthly, and developing electrical safety procedures, carrying out preventative maintenance by qualified personnel. Not only saves you money from avoidable accident costs, but it will also build a culture of safety in your factory. Most importantly, workers should be trained on potential electrical hazards and safe work practices prior to their job assignment. They are your eyes and ears for electrical safety in your facility. Train them on how to conduct visual checks and who to report to when they see electrical related accidents and near misses. These are easy steps that can have great impact. For more detailed instructions on electrical safety, review the LF Supplier Compliance Manual.